Boundaries are a great way to protect your energy. If you aren't able to express these limitations, you may get taken advantage of or stepped on. It's important to implement boundaries because it teaches other people how to respect you. And it also is a great way to honor yourself. <laughs> it's also important to implement boundaries with your dog because you need to teach your dog where your limits are. I know how it is, we love them so much. Sometimes we allow our dogs to do certain things that probably they shouldn't do, but they're so cute and we love them so much, we allow them to do it anyway. These little things add up and your dog takes note of it. They start to know what you're capable of. So when you set boundaries for you and your dog, you're letting your dog know your limitations, how far you're willing to go. So same thing in real life. When you set boundaries around your life, you're letting other people know your limits and how far you're willing to go. So I have five different boundaries that I'm going to talk about. Two of them are just for humans, but the rest of them are relatable to dogs and humans. The first one is an emotional boundary. Emotional boundary is respecting and honoring your energy, recognizing what you're willing to take in and what you're not willing to take in, and limiting sharing to people who respond poorly. So an emotional boundary can be internal and also external. An example of an internal boundary would be a rabbit hole situation. Let's say you just found out someone got in a car wreck. So now you're worried you're about to get in a car wreck and you're thinking about, okay, when I get in the car wreck, who's gonna be able to take care of my dog? Will my dog be okay? And you just go down this rabbit hole. It's really important to implement emotional boundary within yourself during those moments. An emotional boundary could look like this. Thank you brain for trying to protect me, but we don't need to go there right now. An external boundary could look like this. It's asking for help when you need it. I'm having a really hard time. Do you have a minute to talk about it? I can't talk about this right now. Now is not a good time. I'm having a really hard time and I really need to talk. Are you in a place to listen? Setting these boundaries help other people know because if you start rambling your emotions to someone who's not at the capacity to listen, it's going to end up hurting you. So set that boundary immediately. And same thing for if you're not in a position to talk about something, set a boundary. Hey, I can't talk about this right now. Can we talk about it tomorrow? The second type of boundary is an intellectual boundary. This has to do with ideas and curiosity and also whether or not it's a good time to talk about something. It's respecting someone else's opinion but honoring yours at the same time. It can sound like this. I understand where you're coming from, but let's just agree to disagree. I hear you and I understand your perspective. Until you're ready to listen to my perspective, I'm not willing to have this conversation anymore. I will not talk to you when you're yelling at me like this. Let's continue this conversation tomorrow. When you're implementing a boundary around these types of intellectual things, you're letting people know how far you're willing to go and you're also protecting your energy. If you cannot have a conversation with someone yelling at you, then end it and postpone it for another day. Setting boundaries is really about what works best for you and really considering how much you're willing to take in. The third type of boundary is a physical boundary. This can be with humans, with dogs, friends, family, whoever. Physical boundaries are your need for personal space, touch, or needs. A physical boundary with your dog may be this. Eating before your dog. Not allowing your dog to sleep with you. Exiting the door before your dog. Not allowing your dog to say hi to other dogs on leash. What this does for your dog is give them structure. The structure that they need because they cannot create it themselves. Dogs thrive off of having a routine and the more we can provide that for them, the better they will be. There are a lot of physical boundaries that I set with Noodle. I need control, so I give Noodle structure. Part of that structure is a lot of physical boundaries, like not allowing him to exit the door before me. So when I implement that boundary of you're not leaving the door until I say so, and even you can't get out of the car until I say so, it really gives him the structure that he needs because otherwise he will do whatever he wants. It really sets our walk up. So whatever happens before or after the car, before or after leaving the door, we've established from the very beginning, hey, you're gonna listen to me this time. Setting that physical boundary teaches Noodle, hey, this is how this walk is gonna go. These are my limits as your owner. This is what I'm able to handle as your owner. And when you set that expectation for your dog and hold strong to it, they will follow through and it is so rewarding. Now a physical need with another person may sound like this. 
Hey, I'm not really big on hugging. Can we just do a fist bump or handshake? I'm really tired and I need to lay down now. It could also be saying no to drinks with friends because you've dedicated this time of day to work out. Physical boundaries are really the physical things that provide structure on your limitations. Setting a physical boundary is really a great way to honor yourself. Your boundaries will look different from everyone else's and that's okay. Your boundaries need to be very in tune with your needs because after all, a boundary is protecting you and what you're able to let in and give out. The fourth boundary is time. Now this is a really hard one to implement. The time boundary honors your time. This is super important at home, at work, in your social life. Your time is so valuable and it's important how your time is utilized. A time boundary with your dog can look like giving them a kennel break because you just need a second to breathe and you don't want to have to be having an eye on them at every minute. I like to kennel my dog sometimes when I'm cooking or I'll give them a command to do. That way I have the time to do the things I need to get done. A human to human time boundary can sound like this. I can only stop by for one hour. I'm happy to help you with that. My hourly rate is it can also be getting off of a call at a predetermined time. You know, calls will run late all the time, but if you set a certain amount of time, like I'm only giving this an hour and I say I have to go, that would be a great way to honor your time. Again, when you set boundaries for yourself, especially around time boundaries, you're letting other people know how to respect you. And you're also letting them know your limits. When you don't set boundaries, people will start to assume you're willing to extend yourself for your time. You're willing to do that thing for free. You're willing to stay on a call for two hours later. And in the end, you end up resenting it. So it's better to just set a boundary from the get-go. Boundaries are harder to set, I know, but the more you do it, the more aware you become of boundaries and the easier it gets to implement them in your life. The last boundary is a material boundary. This is limiting how your materials are treated and it will also help prevent resentment in time. This would be saying no to someone who asked to borrow your car, laptop, or clothes just because you're uncomfortable with it. A material boundary with your dog would look like putting away all your clothes, your shoes, your socks, the things you know your dog loves to chew on. Put that away. Don't give them an opportunity to chew on it. Another material boundary with your dog would look like not allowing your dog to get on your furniture. The more we set boundaries, the more we recognize them. When we set boundaries, we show others how to show up for us, especially our dogs. It's so important to communicate our needs to them so they know how to show up for us. We are in control after all. So the next time you find yourself giving in to your dog out of love, ask yourself, does a boundary need to be implemented? Thank you so much for watching. I'd love to know what you learned from this video, so please drop a comment below of what you've learned. And also how you plan to implement boundaries with your dog and just in your life. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. See you next time.